Hi, I'm Nikodem and if you are curious how to build an arcade machine on a budget, this video is for you. Arcade machines used to be very popular back in the days and then people started to create emulators that let you run these games on any computer, for example, a very small Raspberry Pi which is a single board computer the size of a credit card. In this video we will use this computer to create an arcade machine and we will build it out of OSB boards and some very inexpensive components. The total cost of the build is around just $100. It's worth mentioning in the beginning that the idea for this project was not mine, it was proposed by my brother San Mateo who really wanted to build it, he's young and I wanted to help him, I wanted to inspire and I hope this video will also inspire you to do something, something creative, whatever you want with someone younger or older, you know, just to build whatever, have fun and enjoy the process. What do we need to build this project? A Raspberry Pi, Freebie Plus or newer joystick, 9 arcade buttons, monitor, cables, one sheet of plywood or OSB, but if you want this project to be under $100, definitely OSB, and some other components. Whenever possible, buy used components to keep the cost of the project low. We did a quick research mainly on YouTube to find similar projects and videos to inspire a bit and see how people solved some common problems. And then I did a quick CAD design. It wasn't super useful, but we wanted to just know how much material do we need and what should be the size of the machine to fit monitor inside nicely. Mateusz started to work on the panel for the buttons and the joystick. It was just a test piece to see if the layout works and if it will be like comfortable to use. And I started to work on the side pieces for the cabinet. To cut some of the pieces I could use my CNC machine and have like incredible precision and some nice cuts but that wasn't the point of this project. I wanted to use simple tools and show you that such a project can be built with simple and cheap tools. You don't need anything fancy like a CNC machine or a laser. Really simple tools but they can do a lot. By the way, if you would like to build a CNC machine, you can check out Indimil. It's an open source project that I built a long time ago. It's an easy to build CNC machine with files available on the internet for free. You can also buy some of the parts from my store and support my work. Link is in the description. Most of the cuts have been done with a circular saw. If you don't have one, you can use jigsaw as well, no problem with that. And then we clamped both pieces together and sanded them down with a belt sander and that is to get the two pieces that are exactly the same. If you don't have a belt sander, use any other kind of sander or even sandpaper or file will do. Then Mateusz moved on to work on the final version of the panel for buttons and joystick. The test version was quite okay, but we just wanted to move a little bit the buttons to make the design more spacious. He drew everything on the new piece of material and drew everything on the drill press. We fixed small pieces of wood on the inside of every panel and that way we were able to hide all the screws, nothing is visible from the outside and everything is mounted from the inside. Of course, if you don't mind, if you want to put some stickers, you can just put the screws from the outside and it will work as well. It was a bit late already, but I still wanted to finish the piece that will hold the monitor and here I'm doing a plunge cut with a circular saw. It is a bit dangerous, so you have to be careful when doing that. On the next day, not really that early in the morning, we went back to the workshop to continue working on this machine and Mati has been working on finishing the piece for the monitor and I have been cutting more panels to finish the enclosure. We also did these little buttons, printed labels on a small Bluetooth label printer, then disassembled the buttons and just stick the stickers on top. It's an easy way to make start, select and hotkey buttons easily recognizable. 
Here is a quick message from the sponsor of this video, JLCPCB. I'm cooperating with JLCPCB for years. They have made almost every single PCB for my projects. Their quality is just superior. They have a clean, easy to navigate website and offer a lot of services connected to PCBs, but not only. You can order classic PCBs, single layer, two layers, up to 20 layers, even flex PCBs, stencils, PCB assembly, and even 3D printing services. You can order five PCBs of dimension up to 10 by 10 centimeters for just two dollars and change the color of your solder mask at no additional cost. And currently they celebrate engineers day with some special discounts for various services as well as bulk orders. If you want to check out JLCPCB link will be in the description. Thanks a lot for sponsoring and now back to the video. And then we went to a store to buy the speakers. Of course you can use used speakers, but we just were in a hurry to finish the project. We bought speakers that were not really expensive, but were terrible inside when I wanted to take them out of the case. I actually broke the cable and because there were like two very thin cables going through the membrane of the speaker, there was no way to fix that. So I found new speakers in my, you know, random stuff that I have from all of the projects. I soldered them and fortunately everything worked. So basically we just bought a very low quality amplifier. When we were building, speakers for me was just like a nice addition to the project, but once the project was finished, I do have to say speakers are great. Listening to the music and to the sound of the game is super cool and it's like a part of the experience, so you definitely should add speakers to your machine as well. Here we are adding the panel for the monitor and the monitor will be added later and most of the panels were just mounted with some screws and glue but because the monitor is quite heavy we want it to be extra safe here so we added metal brackets in the corners. Tutaj mamy już wszystkie elementy wycięte. Tutaj mamy dół, który jeszcze nie jest przykręcony. Typ, który nam tutaj fajnie wchodzi i góra, którą zrobiliśmy pod kątem, żeby nam się tu fajnie spasowało. And then I was away for a moment, but I was really happy to see that Mateusz, without me, continued working on the project, he fixed the monitor, added more panels and continued the work on the machine. And without my help, he did a really, really good job. To mount the monitor, we used a small metal plate that was attached to the monitor stand that we just throw away. This metal plate was fixed to a piece of OSB board and then to a piece of plywood that was acting like a brace to mount the monitor to the enclosure. I na dole damy taką listewkę, którą przykręcimy i ten monitor się oprze na tym i jeszcze to potem dobijemy taką deską. In one of the smaller top panels we drilled two holes for the speakers and then the speakers were attached from the inside with a hot glue and from the outside we 3D printed small grills that covered the holes. If you don't have a 3D printer, no worries because you can just simply buy or build these kind of grills out of anything else. We also 3D printed an enclosure for the Raspberry Pi that you can easily buy in any store and fits for the machine that you can just buy so 3D printer is not needed in this project at all. Connecting buttons to the Raspberry Pi might be a bit tricky, but if you want to do it the easiest way possible, just buy a module where you can just connect all the cables to the screw terminals and then connect this module to the Raspberry Pi with a USB cable. It's the easiest and safest way to do it. But I decided to do it in a bit more complicated way and I bought this kind of shield that is attached on top of the Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, not all the pins are connected to the screw terminals, so I decided to not use it in the end and I just used a protoboard and some gold pins. Then I soldered a lot of connectors with a lot of small cables. It was a lot of work, but I had fun to do it. And if you are good at soldering and you are not afraid of electronics, definitely you can do it as well. No problems with that. The schematic can be found on the Recallbox website and it will be linked in the description. 
How to install everything on a Raspberry Pi? We'll need a micro SD card, 16 or 32 gigabytes should be enough. You connect the card to your computer and then you search for an official Raspberry Pi imager that you download from the official website. It's a simple installation file that you can install on Windows or Mac systems. After running the program, you can choose the version of the Raspberry Pi that you are using. In my case, that's version 3. And then we have to choose the operating system. There is a lot of different things to choose from, from a standard Raspbian, very popular in Raspberry Pi, to emulators. We have Recallbox and RetroPi. I decided to go with Recallbox, but if you prefer RetroPi, no problem with that. Choose your version of the Raspberry Pi and then the proper disk. Be careful as this will format the drive that you choose. So definitely choose the SD card and not like the SSD or HDD that you have in your computer. Click OK. It will take about 10 to 15 minutes to install everything on the SD card. And once it's ready, you can unplug the card and put it in the Raspberry Pi from the bottom side of the Raspberry Pi. You can connect controller, monitor and power to the Raspberry Pi. Recall box will be launched automatically. You can configure your controller and start playing games. It's really that easy. To use external joystick and buttons connected to GPIO of the Raspberry Pi, we have to configure one thing on the SD card, but it's very clearly explained in the documentation, so there will be a link in the description. Unfortunately, I didn't have these kind of connectors that you can just clamp on a cable and then connect to the button. It would make it a lot easier, but without them, it's also possible. You just have to solder all cables to the buttons, and then if something breaks, you have to replace the button or whatever. It's a bit more work, but it's not really that hard. Mateusz does not have a lot of experience with soldering, but he did a very good job. If you're afraid, just practice a bit and definitely will be able to do it. And then there was cable management, very satisfying. And once completed, it really looked very nice. And then we turned on the machine to test it and it was just simply working. All the buttons, the joystick, the speakers, no loose connections, everything was perfect on the first try. Three of the buttons that we used as select, start and hotkey had an LED built in, so I connected them to a small LED 12 volt power supply that worked great. And here is the most dangerous part of this project. I wanted to use this kind of connector and then connect the cables to an extension cord and just plug everything in here. I know what I'm doing. I do have experience, but I'm not going to show in detail how to do it all. If you want to do it in a safe way, just buy an extension cord with the cable already prepared and put the extension cord inside the machine and the cable out. So that you can connect the power. I wanted to have it done a bit nicely so that's how I did it but of course you can just do it with an extension cord as well. If you're watching my projects for a long time you know that I love to sign every single project so inside it we of course added our signatures and the date if in the future we have to fix something we can take a look at the signatures at the date and just remember how we built this project a long time ago. Bottom and back panels were mounted in the same way with small pieces of wood attached to the sides but this time we didn't use glue and put the screws on the outside so that in case in the future we need to have access to the machine, fix something, add some new features, you can just easily unscrew the screws and go inside. I'm not going to tell you how to find and upload games to the machine, but if you just Google it, you will find everything you need to know. And in the end, here is our working arcade machine. My family loved it and we started to beat each other's records. It was a lot of fun, but most importantly, it was a lot of fun to build this machine with Mateusz in just four days and under $100. I hope this video will be an inspiration for you to also build something, not really an arcade machine, but whatever you want with someone younger or older, because it's a lot of fun to do stuff like this together. If you have any questions, ideas, you can share that in the comments. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to this channel. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.